In this lecture, we're going to talk about damping. So far, we have talked about modal analysis and we have focused on M and K, where we obtain eigenvalues and eigenvectors and then we can decouple the equations. But the elephant in the room is basically what happens with damping. So if we begin our analysis with the typical equation of motion here, and we use the coordinate transformation to get us to modal coordinates here. And we say x is phi times z, where phi uh, psi uppercase is the matrix of mo shapes. Right, so psi, as we've discussed before, is simply a matrix that has all the mo shapes as columns. And z are the modal coordinates, right? So the response of x in time is simply the sum of mo shapes times the time response of the modal coordinates. We substitute that into our equation of motion and then we multiply, pre-multiply by phi transpose and we obtain this equation. We know very clearly that this term here is the identity because by definition these are mass normalized modes so we know what happens with that. We know what happens to this multiplication here, right? This is the matrix of lambdas. So this is another diagonal, lambda. And so then the big question is, what happens to this matrix here? <coughs> well, in general, if you pick a C matrix, somewhat arbitrarily, this phi transpose C phi is not going to be diagonal. And so you destroy the nice property of modal analysis which is that it decouples the equations of motion. But there is one choice which is very prevalent, most people use it and you've probably heard the name, it's classical damping. It has nothing to do with classical music but it is such that phi transpose C phi becomes diagonal. So basically we approach the problem from the end. We say let's pick a C such that when we do phi transpose C phi that comes out diagonal. And we're gonna call that classical damping and a lot of nice things come out of this. However, I will say before we continue that there is no physical reason why this has to be so. This is simply a mathematical convenience that it so happens that it kind of works in practice for many different types of structures but this cannot be derived by any laws of physics. This is just simply a mathematical convenience and since damping is so complicated and hard to understand we might as well pick a mathematical model that is solvable at least. <clears throat> Some possible choices that make the C matrix diagonalizable with the Mo shapes. Well since M is diagonalizable with the Mo shape, if we pick a damping matrix that is proportional to the mass with a factor alpha, then this becomes diagonalizable. The same thing can be said about the stiffness and the same thing can be said about the sum of mass and stiffness scaled by different factors alpha and beta. And these are the so-called Rayleigh damping, right? But there are also other choices that make the matrix diagonalizable. For example, if you pick the damping matrix as k m to the minus 1 times k, this is a possible choice that also diagonalizes the matrix. And let's see that. So if I, I'm going to omit the brackets here for 
time's sake. Uh, so let's say that I multiply by phi transpose. Um, let me actually let me use the vector notation. Uh, phi transpose k m to the minus one k phi. Is that diagonal? Well, let's recall the definition of k phi, right? So this term right here can be written from the eigenvalue problem, right? We know that um, m phi lambda equals to k phi. So k phi is m phi lambda. So we can rewrite this as phi i transpose k m to the minus 1. Then here we write m phi lambda. Well, m to the minus 1 times m becomes the identity. And then we are left with phi i transpose k phi i lambda. We know that by the property of eigenvalue orthogonality that phi i transpose k phi, if these are mass normalized, this is lambda i. Right? So then the whole thing becomes lambda i square. Now that's what happens when phi i and phi j are the same, but what happens when they are different? That should be zero if they are indeed diagonalizable. And what we find is that that is so. Let's just prove it right here. Um, again, we can substitute for the mass matrix. So this becomes phi i lambda i by property of the eigenvalue problem, right? And then this becomes identity and then we have phi j, there is a transpose here, phi j transpose, phi j transpose k phi i lambda i. Well, if you recall from the modal orthogonality property, phi i transpose k phi j, or phi j transpose k phi is zero. And so this comes out to be exactly zero which proves that this choice of damping matrix is diagonalizable. The same thing can be said for mk to the minus 1m. I'm going to let you try to prove that one on your own, but it's a similar procedure. <clears throat> this one is also diagonalizable. And there are many, and there are, you know, many other choices like this. And, and any choice that proves diagonalizable, you can combine it with another choice. So it will also be diagonal. So, for example, you could pick a damping matrix that looks like that. And these are all constants, alpha, beta, gamma, epsilon. And and that's diagonalizable because each one of the terms is diagonalizable independently. So regardless of that, once we prove that we have diagonalized the damping matrix, we are going to call the terms that come in the diagonal D. And that D we're going to call it 2 omega psi in order to be analogous to single degree of freedom problems, right? And so once we prove that phi transpose C phi is diagonal, we're going to call that matrix D, and each one of the diagonal terms, it's di equal to 2 omega psi. And this psi here is what we know as modal damping ratio modal damping ratio 
So depending on what you pick, these modal damping ratios vary with frequency. So for example, if you pick mass proportional, you can show that the damping ratio varies inversely proportional to omega. So it looks like this. If you choose stiffness proportional, then you can show that psi varies linearly with omega. So the faster the modes get, the more damping they have. And if you do mass proportional, then the faster the modes get, the smaller the damping gets. Yeah? Now, you can also pick a damping matrix such that you select every single modal damping ratio for every mode. So you can predefine what your damping ratios are going to be for every single mode and then come up backwards and find out what C matrix would allow you to do that. And this is basically the mathematical proof that shows that that damping matrix will look like this. Yeah. And so eventually at the end what you have is that your equation of motion initially uh, in, in physical coordinates can be decoupled uh -huh. using the modal, the modal equation and you obtain modes, modal responses for every mode which are a function of the modal frequency and a function of the modal damping ratio and then once you solve for every mode, you combine at the end and add the modal responses scaled by their corresponding mode shape to obtain the complete response in physical coordinates using this formula.